before we start with back EMF, I just want to remind you of one Faraday's law which says uh, change in flux produces an EMF which opposes its cause, therefore the negative sign. In this uh, diagram of a synchronous motor, let's say you are not giving the three-phase supply. Okay, you are giving the excitation to the rotor and somehow the rotor is rotated. Let's say you are rotating the rotor. What's going to happen is that there will be a constant magnetic flux here, north and south, because of the uh, rotor excitation. And when you rotate it, it's going to cut the stator coils. And therefore, there will be an induced EMF E in the stator coil. This is nothing but working of a synchronous generator. Now, picture a motor again. Now, this is the synchronous motor again. We are giving the three phase supply and we are also giving the DC excitation. Now, because of the rotating magnetic field, the rotor will start moving, right? Now, apply this concept here. What we said here, the rotor flux will produce an EMF in the stator coil because of the flux cutting action. Similarly, here, the rotor flux which is rotating because of the rotating magnetic field, this rotor rotation will produce a EMF in the stator coils. Now the stator coils already have a terminal voltage V and because of this rotor action will produce another EMF E and it which will oppose the cause therefore negative. Now this vector is the total EMF in the stator coil. Now this E it's nothing but a back EMF. If we draw the phasor diagram, we'll see V here, we'll see E here. This is nothing but the EMF produced in the stator coil. And they both lag each other by an angle alpha. This is nothing but a load angle. Now if we extend this uh, by 180 degree, this is nothing but, this was our EF, general notation. And this is EB. And EB is nothing but minus EF. Now this is our back EMF, this is our terminal voltage. Bo resultant of both will give rise a, to a resultant voltage. This resultant voltage is responsible for producing the air gap field. Okay, so now in order to understand what is over excitation or under excitation, we have to keep in mind of only one thing that is this EB. And EB is only dependent on the rotor parameters and by rotor parameters is nothing but the excitation. For normal excitation, the magnitude of terminal voltage should be equal to that of back EMF voltage. For over excitation, value of back EMF is greater than V. And similarly for under excitation, value of EB should be less than that of V. These are all magnitudes. So these are the conditions which we can look for in order to overexcite or underexcite a machine. So that's about it. Thank you for watching.